In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how you can go about calculating the distance between two points that are on a Cartesian plane. So let's say we had one point here, and this was point A, and then we had another point over here, and this was point B. For us to find the distance between these two points is not going to be as straightforward as it would be if, let's say, we were trying to find the distance between point A and a third point that was over here. Let's say this was point C. If we were trying to find the distance between A and C, we could do that easily by just calculating the amount of units that that line extends through the x-axis. And that's because that line is going to be a straight line that is only going to be changing in the x dimension. That line is not going to be changing in terms of y. It is going to remain at y is equal to 3. We can see here that a is at y is equal to 3, and c is at y is equal to 3. So the only part of this line AC that would be changing would be the change in x. So that would be an easy distance to calculate because all we would need to do is count the amount of units across the x-axis that that line extends. And in this case, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So the distance of AC would be 4 units. Now determining the distance between A and B is not as simple and that's because we can see that A and B is going to involve both a change in the x dimension, it's going to go across the x axis by some amount of units, and it also involves a change in the y dimension. So in addition to going across the x axis, it's also going to go up the y axis. And because it's going to change in both the x and y dimensions, we can't simply calculate it the way that we would calculate AC or the way that we could calculate a line that goes from A to a point directly above A. Let's say this was point D. We could easily calculate this, again, because we have no change in the x dimension. These points are going to remain at x is equal to 2. And the only change we have is in y. And in that case, this line would be 1, 2, 3 units long. So when we have a line that goes straight up the y-axis or straight across the x-axis, we know that those distances are easy to calculate. But when we have a line that goes from A to B that is diagonal, it's changing in both the x and y-axis, then it becomes a little bit more complicated. So let's get rid of these two green points for now and focus on AB. If we're trying to find the distance between AB, we are essentially trying to find the length of this line segment AB. If we were to connect these two points with a line, what we are trying to find is the length of this line segment. And there's actually a pretty easy way that we can calculate this. And that is going to be to construct a right-angled triangle in which this line segment AB is going to become the hypotenuse of the right-angled triangle. Our other two sides are going to go directly across the x-axis and directly up the y-axis. So those two lines are going to be easy to calculate. So let's actually do that right now. We know that the coordinates of A are when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. So let's quickly make a note of that here. A is going to be when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. And B is going to be when x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 6. So we know that B is going to be when x is equal to 5. So let's extend a line across here that is going to go from point A up until x is equal to 5. That's going to be right until here. That is going to make up one of our sides of our right angle triangle. Now if we do the same thing, if we draw a line that's going down from point B to meet with that point, so we're going to draw a line that goes down from point B and it's going to end at y is equal to 3 where A is, what we have just done with these two dashed lines is create a right angle triangle. This is 90 degrees because we know that these two lines are going to be perpendicular to one another. And because these two sides, let's say this is point C, this side AC is going to go directly across the x axis. It is not changing in the y dimension. y is going to remain 3 at point A and at point C. 
That means that this line AC is going to be very easy for us to calculate. We know that AC is just going to be the difference between our first x-coordinate and our second x-coordinate. So we know that line segment AC is going to be equal to x2 minus x1. x2 is going to be this point over here, and x1 is going to be this point over here. So x2 is when x is equal to 5, and x1 is going to be when x is equal to 2. And we can determine that just by looking at our coordinates here. We have x1 here and y1 here, and here we have x2 and y2. So all we have to do is subtract the first number of each of our coordinates from our two points. So we have 5 minus 2, which is equal to 3. So we know that AC has a length of 3 units. And we can even see that just by counting the units that it goes across the x-axis. It's going to start here, and then it goes 1, 2, 3 units. And now we can do the same thing with BC. BC, since it is only changing in the y dimension, the x coordinate is going to remain at x is equal to 5 for point B and point C. So we can easily calculate BC by calculating y2 minus y1. So BC is going to be equal to y2 minus y1, and y2 is 6 and y1 is 3. So that is going to be 6 minus 3 which is also equal to 3. So BC is also going to have a length of 3. And again, we can see that just by going and following where point B is and counting how many units down the y-axis it goes. So it starts here, and we go 1, 2, 3 units. And now, since we have a right angle triangle, and we've calculated the lengths of two sides of our right angle triangle, we easily know how to calculate the length of the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. So we know that the hypotenuse squared is going to be equal to BC squared plus AC squared. These are the other two sides. And we know that BC is equal to 3, and AC is also equal to 3. So our hypotenuse AB squared is going to be equal to 3 squared plus 3 squared. And if we're trying to solve for AB, then we're going to have to take the square root of both sides. So AB is going to be equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared. And 3 squared is equal to 9. So we know that the hypotenuse AB is going to be equal to 9 plus 9, which is going to be equal to the square root of 18. And that is our final answer. The length of side AB is going to be equal to the square root of 18. And if you were to put that into your calculator, you would get that the numerical value in decimal form is going to be 4.24. So the length of our hypotenuse, the length of this line, is going to be 4.24 units. And that is how you are going to calculate the distance between those two points. Let's go over another example. So here we are given two points, and again we are asked to calculate the distance between these two points. So let's start out by labeling this point as point A and this point as point B. And the first thing that we want to do is write down the coordinates of our two points. So point A, the coordinate is going to be when x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, when x is equal to negative 4, and y is going to be equal to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So x is equal to negative 4, and y is equal to negative 3. That is the coordinate of A. B will have the coordinates when x is equal to negative 1, and y is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So now we have our two coordinates, and remember, with these coordinates, this is going to represent x1, this will represent x2, this will represent y1, and this will represent y2. So we know to calculate the distance between these two points, we are going to need to construct a right angle triangle, because as we can see, there is going to be a change in both x and y. So if we were to join A and B with a line segment, now what we are trying to do is calculate the length of this line segment. So we can draw our other two sides of our right angle triangle. First, we're going to take point A 
and we're going to extend it across the x-axis until we reach our x-coordinate of b. We'll do the same thing with b. We're going to extend it down the y-axis until it reaches the y-coordinate of a. So now we have our right-angled triangle. And again, these two sides of our right-angled triangle will be very easy for us to calculate because they're only going to be changing in one dimension. This only changes in the x dimension, and this only changes in the y dimension. So if we were to label this as point C, we know that the length of AC is going to be equal to x2 minus x1. x2 is negative 1 and x1 is negative 4. So we have negative 1 minus negative 4. And when you have two minuses, minus minus is a plus. So this is going to be negative 1 plus 4, which is equal to 3. So AC has a length of 3 units. Now BC is only changing in the y dimension, so the length of BC is going to be y2 minus y1 y2 is 4 and y1 is negative 3. So we're going to have 4 minus negative 3. And this is going to essentially become 4 plus 3, which is equal to 7. So BC is going to have a length of 7 units. And if we use a Pythagorean theorem again to determine the length of this hypotenuse, we know that the hypotenuse, which is AB, squared is going to be equal to AC squared plus BC squared. We know that AC is equal to 3, so this will be 3 squared plus and BC is 7, so that will be 7 squared. And since we are trying to solve for AB, we're going to need to take the square root of both sides. So if we're just solving for AB, that's going to be equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 7 squared. We know that 3 squared is 9 and 7 squared is 49. So this is going to become the square root of 9 plus 49. And 9 plus 49 is 58. So the answer will be the square root of 58. And that is going to be the length of our hypotenuse. If you were to put the square root of 58 into your calculator, you are going to get 7.62. So in decimal point, it's 7.62 units in length. That is going to be this length right here. So now we know that the distance between point A and point B is 7.62 units, or the square root of 58. So what we've just shown in these two examples is that when you're trying to find the distance between two points, there's actually a pretty easy formula that you can use to do that. And that is going to be that the distance between your two points, which we'll denote by D, is going to be equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So this is going to be the formula that you can use to calculate the distance between two points. So this formula we have here is exactly the same as what we have right here. We can see that this 3 is going to represent x2 minus x1, and it's x2 minus x1 squared, which is why we have the squared here. This 7 is going to represent y2 minus y1, and it's squared, which is why we have the squared here and we take the square root of the whole thing. So if you remember this formula, you can easily do it even without having to draw out your diagram, but I find that it makes things a lot easier when you do sketch out your right angle triangle, you're less likely to make any mistakes. But using this formula, you don't need to sketch out your right angle triangle. All you need is your coordinates of your two points, and you can apply this to determine the distance between those two points.